<clears throat> I apologize, I'm a couple of minutes behind, but I am in intercession mode. I have been burdened. I wouldn't, I don't know if you would even call it a burden, but yeah, I think it is an intercessory burden. I'm feeling the uh, labor pains of needing to really pray pray through some things, press into some things. Um, <clears throat> and so I am going to be praying and, and just letting the Lord lead. I'll say up front, um, I, I will pray in the spirit some because this is intercession. It was just going to be with the glory tribe, but I feel like this is an important intercessory um, time and uh, for other people to hear. So if you're a uh, non-believer or you're not sure what tongues is or you've heard that not to play, pray in tongues in public unless there's somebody to interpret. I'm just going to tell you up front as I pray in the spirit, I am praying in the spirit so that the spirit can illuminate to my mind what to pray for in the natural. So I actually will be interpreting what I am praying myself. It will help me in my prayer, it directs me in my prayer. I pray with, with the, in the spirit and then I pray in, in my understanding. And so it helps bring that up. It removes my mind from the equation of what to pray for and how to pray. It bypasses um, my brain and my thought process so that I can just pray um, the heart of God. And so my name is Emily Rose Lewis. I am a prophetic author, speaker, and teacher. And if this is your first time on, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel, release prophetic words and teachings and prayer sessions, and, and hit the notifications. You got to share this, invite some people. It's really hot in here. I might, <laughs> and I know it's going to get hotter. Y'all come with me to turn the air on. Ooh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you guys for being, um, I know once the spirit revs up, I'm going to get even hotter. So, <laughs> I am taking y'all with me. I've got the air on. Woo, Jesus. You ever feel uh, just an uneasiness in your spirit? The Lord is, is moving and, and putting a prayer I don't know if burden is the right word, but it kind of feels like a pressure, um, just an uneasiness in your spirit. You you know there's something that you've got to pray through and press through. Maybe you've gotten some revelation about a family member or your, your marriage has this strife in it that's just not stopping. <laughs> or, 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 you know, you have uh, this uh, addiction that you've been battling. I mean... God wants us to pray and press through these times and labor through in prayer. And so this is going to be a really in, in, intensive laboring prayer. I just feel in my spirit, I want to keep praying until we, we get the breakthrough. And you can feel when you're praying for something, you can feel, I don't know, you sense in your spirit when, okay, that's good. I, I'm, I'm, I've, the, I've shifted and moved through the spiritual atmosphere into that place of breakthrough and peace, and then you can kind of rest the prayer. You might have seasons of prayer. Uh, we're pre I've been preaching about prayer on Sunday. I'm going to be. I've done one prayer uh, lesson, and I'm going to keep talking about prayer. But Lord, we just come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we want to worship you. We want to know you. We want to bless your name. We want to extol your name at all times. Lord, your praise will continually be in our mouth. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered in shame. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And we seek you, Lord, and we believe your word. We will lack no good thing. We lack no good thing. We lack no good thing. 
in the name of Jesus, every good and perfect gift is coming down from the Father of heavenly lights in whom there is no shifting shadows. In the area, in the pocket, any place in our heart, in our mind, in our will, in our emotions where darkness still exists, we speak light in Jesus' name. Light in the name of Jesus. Light to our soul. Light to our feet. Light to our path. God, turn on your light. Shine your light into our lives. Give us the courage, Lord. Give us the courage, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, God. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. We praise your name, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Father God, we thank you that you are a God that hears, that you are a God that loves, that you are a merciful God. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We come before you and ask for your mercy over our lives. Ask for your grace to pour, be poured out on us. Lord, we come to you in humility. We come to you and admit that we have failed in our attitude, in our words, in our actions, Lord. We ask that you would cover our sin by the blood of your son. We receive forgiveness, Lord. We have failed you. We haven't done the things you've told us to exactly when, where, and how at all times, Lord. And we are coming to you and asking you to remove the shame and guilt of our sin. And we receive that forgiveness and come into your presence with thanksgiving, thanking you that we don't have to carry that sin and we don't have to allow our sin to separate us from you for one more second. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just take a moment and like if there's something that's kind of separating you, if there's some unconfessed thing just in your heart so that you can get that out of the way and just plead the blood of Jesus over that. <clears throat> and we just plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, we release and we forgive anybody who has wronged us, Lord. We release and forgive them. Strengthen us to release and forgive them. <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just feel right here just to stay here for just a minute. Because there is something, there is something that's blocking, that's going to block you from moving forward. There's some things you need to confess. I don't care if you've been doing it 20 million days, confess it today. Put it at the cross. Don't worry about tomorrow. His grace is sufficient for this day. So, Lord, I pray that you would forgive us for imbalances, that you would forgive us for extremes, that you would forgive for laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness. Lord, God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for going to sleep in the spirit some people have gone to sleep and i say wake up in the name of jesus wake up wake up wake up in jesus name <clears throat> we're going to stand in the gap <clears throat> for the for the body for our, our 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 family and and for the body of christ around the world around the world this is really some intercession that has to go on there is a deep repentance that needs to come from the a remnant of god's people who are determined to do what he's telling them to do, when he's telling them to do it, how. Not perfect people, but people who are pressing towards that place of perfection. And so we want to press in together towards that place of perfection. Let our, our sin is behind us. The cross is before us. If nobody goes with us, we're going to go forward. If nobody in your group is doing what God is directing them to do nobody in your home is doing what God is directing them to do we are going forward and we just speak and put that out there in the spiritual atmosphere a, a, a dogged determination that we will live righteous lives before the Lord we will live in the love and admonition of the Lord we will live walking every single day of our lives pressing towards that mark of perfection not that we've already reached it or haven't already been made perfect but the one thing that we are doing the one thing that we are doing is we are pressing forward and forgetting what lies behind and pressing on to that mark that of perfection that place of freedom for which christ has died to set us free freedom 
We have been set free for freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from sin. We do not take the grace of God in vain. Lord, forgive us when we've taken your grace in vain. Forgive us when we've taken your grace in vain and just thought it's okay to live sinful, sloppy lives or to just put off till tomorrow that thing that you've told us to do today. Lord, God, help us to have a holy reverential awe for you. Lord, may your glory be filled, filled, filled within us. Full, fullness of glory, fullness of yourself to be filled within us, Lord, as your temple. Make your home, make yourself comfortable in us, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that we are turning from the things that grieve your spirit. <clears throat> Lord, God, not unto condemnation. Lord, there's so many people here, including myself, who has things that we need to come up higher in, that we need to be more consistent in. Lord, and we can't do it without you. You have the power. We have authority that you've given to us. And in this prayer session, we are going to step up and we are going to take authority over those things in our lives and in the lives of other people. And in, even within the church, the, the deception, the compromise, the greed, the pride, the rebellion... Lord, we are called to come out from among them and be separate. Not out of, of pride and selfish ambition, but we are to live like royalty, set apart. We are made holy by the blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Lord, that you have promised that no weapon formed against us will prosper. No weapon. That means deception has to go. Deception has to go in the name of Jesus off of us, and we're standing in the gap. We're standing in the gap for the church. We're standing in the gap for our family. We are standing in the gap for our church, our, our specific body of believers that we are with. We are praying. Jezebel has to leave the church in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, if you have to dismantle worship teams, dismantle them. Lord, if you have to dismantle ministries, dismantle them. Lord, do what you need to do in our lives, in the lives of the church to restore full health to your body. Because you said you're coming back for a body without spot or blemish. And that is not where we are, Lord. That is not where we are. You've raised many, many people up. Many people up. This happened, this happened throughout history. The Lord would raise up kings and they wouldn't serve the Lord. Lord, I pray that you remove people who have come to a place of prosperity and blessing and authority and influence within the church. Either, either deliver them or remove them from places of authority and places of influence where they are going and touching other people's lives and poisoning them with deception and poisoning them with false teaching and putting off strange demonic spirits on them through their laying on of hands, Lord. Break it up in the name of Jesus. And then in our own churches, if there's that one person, and you know you've seen them, pray them delivered or out. Pray them delivered or out. They either got to get deliverance or they got to get out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you set in your word. You've given us instruction. You have given us instruction about how to run a church, Lord. And we don't have to look beyond that to know what is okay and what is not okay. And many, many of your people are seeing this is not okay. This is not aligning with your word. And yet there are leaders that are okaying it. And they don't have the authority to okay what you've said is not okay. They don't have that authority. In the name of Jesus, remove the people from the body of Christ that are not going to line up with you from places and positions of authority. Lord, we know that false teachers will come. And we know that people with itching ears that want to hear what they want to hear and think they can live any type of way, they're going to follow those people. But just... Lord, I pray that you would remove them out of Christ's true body, that they could be separated out, that they could be separated out. You go in and bring out the sheep, Lord. Separate them out from us. Remove them. Expose them. Deliver them. 
whatever. We, we can't pray across the board deliverance for each one of these teachers because some of them, they know. They know, they know, they know, they know, and they have been a rebellion and rebellion. And, and sometimes the Lord says, leave them to me. Put them out of the church. Put them out of the church. Bring fellowship with them. They've been dealt with their, they're doing things that they ought not to do and they know better. These aren't baby Christians. These are leaders. They need to be put out of the fellowship so that they can come to the repentance and give them over to Satan so that he can do what he needs to do that their soul might be saved. <clears throat> you know, when praying for people, intercessory prayer, people with uh, mercy gifts, bless them, Lord. But I feel like I'm merciful, you know. But God, bring us to a, to a place of balance with ourselves, with other people in the church. May there be people who have the boldness to rise up and speak against what is wrong. Lord, may your church, may your people rise up in government, in the polls, and speak against evil and vote against evil. And stand against evil and fight against evil. Not just on our knees. That's where it starts. And then send us out. Raise us up in a church. Raise us up in a community. Raise us up in business. Give people the finances and the influence that they need in this world to move your kingdom forward and to push back the kingdom of darkness. There's a scripture that says something like, if, if the light within you is dark, how great is that darkness? Lord, if the people that we're looking to, the people at the top, if there are people at the top that are so positioned that if nobody is going to come against them, nobody's going to say anything, you know, you hear, don't touch God's anointed. <clears throat> no, 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 no. That is totally misquoted. Any preacher... Anybody who tells you, you can't speak against me, you can't tell me anything, I'm anointed by, we are all anointed. Anointing is the Holy Spirit, and if the Holy Spirit lives in us, we are all anointed. Just because you have a gift or you have a ministry, that doesn't mean that every, every believer is an anointed. It's not just a special anointing that is on people that you can't touch them. <clears throat> That's an Old Testament verse, and it's taken out of context. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. It has been hidden behind. It has, it has shut people up from speaking up and speaking out. And, Lord, I just pray. Listen. <clears throat> you guys. Oh, Jesus. You can click on a preaching you can click on a teaching and I'm saying this because I've had this experience and it is so deceptive and there is so much truth and you can't even pinpoint it but the next thing you know you're questioning the decisions you're making you think you've heard from God that's confirming this, and it's the enemy it is demonic there are things going on in the spirit realm we got to be so wide awake and alert you can just click on one preacher, one prophet, and hear a message that you think the Lord is talking to you, but because of the spirit that is on that person, it is coming into your life and causing confusion and causing you to misunderstand what God is saying. I've had it happen. I had it happen within the last 24 hours. <sighs> this is why it stirred me up. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Jesus, anybody. It's not like I'm saying that you're, I, I study the word and I know the word. I'm telling you, the deception is great. I don't even understand how it can be. God can work through somebody preaching if they're preaching the truth. And he can bring deliverance and healing through somebody preaching the truth. But they could be sleeping around on their wife and drinking alcohol and all kinds of things. And I'm telling you, for the body without uh, spot or blemish, for the place that he's taken the remnant into, he wants us not to deal with those people, not to listen to those people. There is a, there is a pure ministry. There are pure ministries. Not perfect people, but there are people, you know, you can get in the words, you can have your power. You have to be careful. 
Jesus, it, Jesus, Jesus, mo kashato, mo korashato, mo korashandarabaki, kere sandarabaku, kondarabaki, kere sandariasete, korashandarabaki. I was trying to make a decision, a ministerial decision that involved other people. I got my prayer team praying. I need to make this decision. And I was looking up, you know, if you look on Instagram, if you put somebody's name in the first two or three letters trying to go directly to their Instagram, it'll pull up a list of people. Well, it pulled up a list of people and it pulled up a prophet who I already know is a false prophet. It's the main one. I've actually given this person's name to people close to me, which I don't do that. I know this is not a person who I should be reading, but <laughs> I clicked on her thing and I read her Instagram post. And I was like, Fanny Bob, I need to read that because it sounds really good and it sounds like it's the answer to my question. So foolish of me. So foolish of me. And I did it. I fell into it. And then I got on my YouTube to put something and a, a woman, I've seen her before. I don't know her. I, I, I haven't dug into her at all. I don't know her. But I listened. She was so beautiful. So appealing. She had... Ben, you know, she had learned how to do the camera right and, and flash in and out and have everything in order. She looked really good and like she had it all together and she sounded really good and like she had new, new things that I didn't know. And was explaining things and saying this was the meaning to that word and this, that, something else. And I was like, it was another confirmation, I thought, to go this way. And I said, oh, oh wow, maybe God is having me want to do this thing. But I just did not feel settled. I did not feel settled. I said, Lord, you got to give me a dream tonight. I got to, you know, something. And the whole reason that I was having a hard time making the decision to begin with, it was an important ministry decision. And it was involved other people. It involved partnerships. It involved moving forward. It was a big deal. People are going to be affected. What God's doing in my life is going to be, you know, it was a big deal, big decision. Somebody messaged me an email message last night. I had forgot the name looked familiar, but I had forgot the interaction I had, or I wouldn't have been messaging them to begin with. I'd forgot the interaction I had had with this person in the past. And sometimes somebody will email me from their husband's account. So I, I even thought I might have been talking to a woman, even though it was a man's name. And and he sent me this morning and was talking. It sounded really spiritual and stuff, and I he said it was something about something I posted. Anybody who confronts me about something that I post, I always, I don't come from a place like, I'm the perfect preacher. If somebody comes to me and even writes a comment or, or emails me with a problem, I, I, Lord, did I get this wrong, you know? And he told me it was what I had posted about that hustle Nipsey guy or whatever. I don't know him. I didn't know him from Adam. I didn't know anything about him, but I'm really big about the medical field and them not forcing things on people. And he had been going to do a documentary. I saw a post about him on a website or on a Facebook page that I respect and follow that deals with, you know, the government trying to force medical things and manipulate people to take all kind of medicine. So they had posted this thing and I had reposted it very specifically about that issue. And so they told me this guy, there's like controversy around him where they think he's Jesus or something. And I was like, okay, well that's weird and I don't want to cause anybody else to stumble so I'm going to go take that down. You know, even though I wasn't saying he was a good guy. I said he was a gangbanger but he was still going to release this documentary and ended up getting killed. But since all this other stuff is going on and you're bringing it to my attention, just to be on the safe side, I don't want people to think I'm saying he's God or something, so I took it down. Okay, then the guy, that I got another email from them, and it was a song with a video, a love song, and, he, and it was like, I think about you when I listen to this. And what they had wrote me before was all godly and straight up sounding like a spirit-filled person. And I was like, what? I started to listen to the song and I felt lust hit me. Whew! I felt it hit me hard. I knew he had listened to that song while lusting after me. And I like turned the song off. I was like, Whoa. 
It wasn't the song, it opened the doorway. And I was like, hold on a minute. I remembered who this guy was. He has, he, he has a demon. He has all, he sounds all knowledgeable, but then he has this weird pocket where he, he uses scripture where God's going to give him a bunch of wives. And then the next, I get another message from him saying, you know, I prayed about it and you're supposed to be one of my wives. And I was like, whoa, what in the world? And then you know what? Because I have been praying. I asked my tribe, I asked my prayer team to pray about this decision. Now, granted, I just clicked on that prophet who I knew better and read her Instagram post, and it sounded great, and it sounded like it was leading me in this direction. Then I quit, clicked on this, uh, you know, YouTube video with this well put together girl with 150,000 followers. You know, sounded really good. And do you know? This was yesterday that I clicked on those. This man. Listen to me. This is for you guys. This is for you guys. He sent me a post from that false prophet, and then he sent me a link to that video. How many videos are on YouTube, y'all? How many videos? How many people preaching on YouTube? He sent me a post from that woman, false prophet, and a, that same video that I had clicked on. I said, thank you, Jesus. I should have never listened to either one of them. And I knew exactly what I was supposed to do. And listen, this scares me in a way. Because, I mean, I'm tight with the Lord. I pray and God wasn't going to let me go astray. But how many people out there aren't praying out in the Word, don't know how to hear from God, don't know how to get other people to pray for them when they're, and just are living a mess, confusion, demons tagging them, demons taking them down, taking them down the wrong, but thinking they're hearing from God, taking scriptures out of context and, 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 all this crazy stuff that the enemy's doing to infiltrate the church. And I'm upset about it. And I sat down because I got the new Bible. It's a uh, Passion Translation. And I hadn't read that before, so I'm like, it's the New Testament. I'm going to read it through in the Passion Translation. All this happened. And I sat down. And where I was, I wish I had brought my Bible. Lord, forgive me. Where I was in Matthew, it's in Matthew 7 about the, the wolves, the ravenous wolves, and the people who, they preach in the name of Jesus. They cast out spirits and these, oh, they talk about purity, and they talk about how witchcraft is bad, and they will preach and teach the word of God with passion, and they are false. They are false. They don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. Their heart isn't right with God. Their, their motives are wrong. Their foundation is not Jesus. And you don't want them speaking in your life. <clears throat> and so, Lord, I pray, God, if we go astray, if we do something stupid like click on the false prophet we know is a false prophet or click on the link, somebody we don't have know from Adam and it is somebody who sounds really good and it's, if it is not of you, Lord, shut it down. Shut it down off of the people who really want to know the truth because the false teachers are going to come. You know, people say that there are going to be false prophets. They're going to prosper. People are going to send them a ton of money. The false prophets get sent so much more money than the real prophets a lot of times because they're casting spells on people and they're promising them lies, lies. Mo korabaki. I pray every true seeker, every truth seeker, every truth seeker, every believer that truly wants to please you, Lord, wake them up, pull them out, draw them away from these false teachers, these ravenous wolves. Lord God, I pray that you would you would block people's money, your true people's money who are sowing and believe and they're sowing into your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would cut that off. I mean, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mora sharabaku, mora bakura shandarabaki, kora shandarabaki. I saw a, I don't know what state it is in. I think it's Bethany. Adoption agency has given in their court battle because they were going to lose their license because a lesbian politician 
was saying if you don't adopt your kids out, if you don't place your kids with lesbians and, and gays, you're losing your funding. And everybody, oh, they caved in, they did the judging them. And I'm saying, hold on a minute. How many people are sowing in to these Christian ministries that are doing good, not just telling them what they want to hear about the next thing that they're going to get from God? Because we have no right to judge somebody who caves in because we are just as much a part of it. They shouldn't even need government assistance. Lord, I pray, God, there would be a major exodus from false teachers receiving your money that your well-meaning people are sowing. Because it's wrong. People are going to be burning in hell for this, you guys, if they don't repent. The people that are leading people astray, they're going to be judged much more harshly. So, Lord, if there is a possibility of repentance, Lord, bring them to repentance. We don't want anybody to suffer else. We don't want anybody to go to hell, Lord. Lord, but I'm mostly concerned about the flock. I'm mostly concerned about the body of believers that really want to serve you and that are really not trying to just hear something that they want to hear. There's a lot of people who, who they're, not, they're not in any way, you know, opening themselves up to these teachers because they're wicked and they just want to hear certain things. Sometimes it's just deceptive. Because they're preaching so much truth and, and it's just deceptive. It's easy to get, I listened to this one lady for a while. And there was nothing that I could discern from what she was saying that was wrong. <clears throat> so I, I, don't, I don't claim to fully understand how, what all is going on. But I know in the spirit realm, there's, there, there, there's an exodus of people a remnant of people and and yes I'm going to talk about money because Jesus talked about money and there are a remnant of people there are a remnant of people that the Lord is going to raise up and finance to finance the kingdom work and to go and do the kingdom work that that God has called them to providing jobs for other people opening doors for other people Financing uh, 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 ministries and, and financing orphanages and, and financing adoption agencies. And here's the thing that really gets my goal. Because when you've been sucked into something, I have had lots of people come to me. You know, finding out somebody that they followed was really, really false. And it mess, it can really mess with somebody's faith. And people can, and then you don't know who to trust. And then you feel isolated. You don't even want to go to church. Me and my husband were out of church for an entire year because we were going to uh, churches where they operated in the spiritual gifts, but every single one of them had women and men full of the Jezebel spirit singing in the choir and nobody put them out and they were clearly demon, demonized drawing the worship to themselves seductively it was bad I didn't even recognize that like I did and when I married somebody who came out of a pornography addiction and was trying to uh, be in a safe place and come to church and it wasn't a safe place for him because he could sense that spirit from a mile away. And then I like picked up on it. Like I just hadn't really, you know, I, don't know. I kind of would think, I don't know. but I mean, it, we, it was rough <laughs> trying to find a church where we could go. And, and honestly, I think that the choir needs to get back behind people and let us all worship God because it's gotten in the church. Like we're worshiping the choir. Is anybody with me here? Am I the only one who's seeing this? Oh, Lord. It's a dangerous place on that stage. It is a danger. That's where Satan was, drawing the worship to God. He was beautiful. He was drawing that to himself. And, and so it's a dangerous place. For, you know, pray for the people and, you know, that same. And, I mean, people might think, I have settled, but I haven't settled. We found a church. 
that doesn't even operate in all that. But they love, they operate in love. I'm not saying it against this type of church or that type of church, but I'm saying I took a year out of church because we couldn't go to church and not have, like, feel like we were, you know, watching a rock concert. <clears throat> I mean, I went to Elevation for years. I love Steve Burdick's preaching helped me, and I, I loved the worship, and me and my son love the worship, and, I, you know, I'm not saying that, that those churches, God's not moving, because I know that he is. I know that he is, but I also know that all the e-groups that I went to, the people were sleeping with each other. Not all of them, but a lot of them, openly. One of the ladies, a leader of, of an e-group, she, she was a manager at Planned Parenthood. And when I told her I got, I, I got married when I she goes, you can always tell the real Christians because they get married right away. And I'm like, what if you're not a real Christian, why are you leading a group? And I, and I, I am. There's a holy righteous frustration and, and anger and passion in me. <clears throat> and I'm not trying to, to uh, condemn in an ugly way any group of people or people that sing in a choir or people, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on individual people, but I really feel that the Lord is going to stir up some people. He's stirring up some people. He's stirring up some people for righteousness and holiness because you are going to drum up power and inviting demons in your meeting with just and then going home and sleeping with your boyfriend. I'm sorry, Jesus. I hate it. It's wrong. Jesus, forgive us, Lord. We had, I mean, Jesus. Lord God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, God. This is why our country is the way it is. It's, we can blame it on the sinners, but of course they're going to be sinners. Where's the salt? If the salt loses its saltiness, it's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled by pigs. Lord, I'm not, I'm not mad at anybody. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I'm mad at anybody. I'm just, God, help us. Help us, Lord, to navigate out of this place where so many have found themselves and there's so many that Lord, the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. We don't need more hyped up programs and more shiny lights. Praise God for the great buildings. Praise God for the great lighting. Praise God for the, the, the advanced media. I love all of that stuff, God, but let us not get away. Let us not try to draw people in with making them comfortable and not telling them the truth and making, a, making emotional experiences are worse. Inviting demonic spirits to come and inhabit the people in order to have a mystical experience. Lord, help us to, to train up people. Help us to be people who are so full of love and so full of you and, and, and so determined to walk in your presence, Lord, that every day there is a steady stream of joy. Every day there is power. That we don't have to just to live off the next emotional experience. That we can do the dishes in power. That we can make love to our spouse in power. That we can dress our kids and change diapers in power for your glory, God. We want to glorify you with our lives. We want to see heaven come to earth in our lives and through the church. Help us not to just have this thing that's been going on like we're just going to get raptured out of all this mess. We don't know when you're coming. Nobody knows the hour of the day. And we're going to have some answering to do. In this country, as many believers as there are, what is going on? What is going on? Is the church is sleeping? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Make us real. Make us real, Lord. Make us really who you created us to be. 
Create in us a clean heart, God. Renew a steadfast spirit within us, Lord. Lord, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from ourselves, God. Deliver us from our flesh, God. Deliver us from our pride, God. Deliver us from our greed. Deliver us from our slumber. Deliver us from, from our foolishness that doesn't see the upside down kingdom. That doesn't see you as you are. We want to see you in your glory, Lord. We want you to, to reveal yourself to us in new ways, God. We want to see you. We want to know you. We want to be known by you. We want to make you known. Lord, we want to make you known. Each and every person that's hearing me, Lord God, I know you put something in them that is so big and so grand and it can't be hatched. It can't be birthed. It cannot come forth through this earthen vessel without your power, with, without your strength without your favor, without your deliverance, with, without your cleansing touch, your healing touch coming in and bringing healing to people's body and soul. There's such brokenness. There's such perversion. It's so pervasive. Lord God, we want eyes to see. We want to be able to see you. We want to be able to see you. By constant youth, like youth, like mature believers who have constantly been able to discern good from evil. We want to grow up. We want to be mature. We want to be mature in every area, not just most areas. We want deliverance in every area, not just most areas. I know, God, there's a lot of work to do, and we need to be out of the way. And these unhealed wounds and, and these un, these sins, these besetting sins, these, these sins that drag us down, these sins that waste our time, these sins that, that cause us not to be able to see you correctly and put us in wrong places and wrong relationships and wrong emotions and waste our time. Lord, break us from the corruptible. Make us into the stuff that you had in mind when you birthed us through our mother's womb, when you thought us up, we want to be fully ourselves, each and every person, fully individual, fully powerful, and you, fully connected to you. There's such brokenness in all these relationships, Lord, because there's brokenness in us. So heal us first. Come to us and heal us first so we can heal others with the same healing, so we can comfort others with the same comfort. So we can share a light that we ourselves possess. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mora shandara baki, kere sete arabaku, kora bahaya sete arabaku, kondara baki era sandara baki, sora shandara bakura shandara baku, kora shandara baki era sete arabaki, kana mahaya sandara baku, kura shandara baki, kara sandara bakura shandara baki. I pray you raise up unknowns. I pray you raise up people who have, who have went through the seasons that they needed to go through to, to be broken. I pray that you raise them up in positions of authority in the natural realm so that they can bring your kingdom here to the earth, bring the reign of your kingdom here in their homes, in their jobs, in their city, and certainly in this country. So we can complete the Great Commission from this place. If our religious freedoms get so messed up and stolen here, how are we going to get the word to every nation and every tongue? It's coming from America. We're, we lost territory, y'all. We have lost some ground in this country. I really feel like the Lord brought me to this region, the D.C. region, to plant this prayer. <laughs> there's a, he's already connected me with prayer ministries up here. And there's already people praying. <clears throat> but he's going to birth even more of that in this area. <sighs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, I'm seeing a vision and people have all these doors around them. All these doors around them that they can walk through. 
and you could open the door and you can see, you know, fields and flowers. You can see things. And I feel like it's like a children's book of us where if there are some enchanted forest, there's some enchanted fields of flowers. Cool. You know, all the, the poppy fields in California. I've heard people like prophesying good things about that. And I don't think so. People, do you remember, <laughs> do you remember the poppy fields putting people to sleep in uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz? I'm not prophesying doom and gloom. I'm not, I believe wholeheartedly that God's people will rise up, but it's not going to happen by just saying, you know, peace, peace, everything ahead of us is okay. No, we got to pray. We got to pray. If my people will hop on my name, we got to repent. We got to clean up our own lives. We got to get in alignment. I think all those poppy fields in California, all the media that's coming out of California, that's pumped into the Christian homes throughout the United States, brainwashing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who call themselves believers. I mean, I have had a TV so long, and I'm not saying that is something you should do, but you need to be very careful about what you watch. That when I go to the gym or something, I flipped. 13 channels and every daggone one of them was a drug commercial. They're putting people to sleep on drugs. Nationally, the, the, the media is in the back pocket of the drug companies. Got a question that they are brainwashing the masses through music, through media. We got to come out from among them and be separate. All that stuff influences us. It influences your mind and your perception. And you get comfortable with sin because you've seen it in a, in a show and in a movie that glorified it in a way that there wasn't death repercussions to sin. And there are death repercussions to sin. I mean, pure flux is there. But, you know, there's the Christian shows and the Christian movies, but the... Those are being watched by Christians. The rest of the masses aren't watching that stuff for the most part. And so we are, we, it, is, it, is, it is literally, it's like the matrix. Not that I'm recommending that. I watched it before I was a Christian. It's a rated R movie. But it's like, we are the ones who actually see what is going on. And if we're asleep, who is going to help all the other people who are being dragged in hell? It's got to be us. We shouldn't even be, you know, we, yeah, we look to the Lord and stuff, but we should be glad that he's tarrying to give us an opportunity to go and reap the harvest. So, and there's good things. There's good things. I'm not even going to, you guys know this. If you're still listening at this point, you're, you're not trying to have your ears tickled. I know that. And you guys know that God has good things in store for those who love him. And no good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is upright. And God will meet the desires of our heart. And when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us as well. But they won't even matter too much. Jesus, Jesus, we need you. Lord, I thank you. For the outpouring of your spirit for the angelic hosts that are coming into our homes into our lives into our workplaces with us and assisting us on the assignments that you have given us that are helping us ministering to us refreshing us by your spirit lord i i feel it it's already broken in my in my world <laughs> like, whoo thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus you, you are good. You are good. And these prayers will be powerful and effective, and they will affect the kingdom of darkness. I was having people pray today because when I do spiritual warfare for a lot of people by myself, with myself, I know I'm not by myself. Y'all are praying too. But I, I get counterattacks, and so I'm like, I'm wising up, and I'm like sending out a request ahead of time. Pray ahead of time for me that there's not a counterattack because I don't want to, you know... <laughs> 
I, if we pray ahead of time, we've seen traps before and what happens, and then we can pray ahead of time for a covering of that, and we don't have to fall into that again. And so I'm growing. <laughs> I'm growing. Especially like if I get on and like and, and praying against demonic spirits in people's homes and stuff. You got 60 people and you're praying for demons to leave their home and they're like, well, who just did that? <laughs> After her. And, you, and I feel it. So y'all pray for me. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastors. And you know, and, and because especially this is why a lot of the people up there are struggling or have fallen. We need prayer. People who are leading and praying and ministering really need the prayers of the people too. And I'm not suggesting not to be merciful of people's flaws. You guys know this. I hope you know this. I'm talking about gross error. I'm talking about wickedness, unrepented wickedness, and demonic spirits infiltrating the church. That's different than people who are pressing in and not perfect because that's every one of us. Those doors. That's reminding me of those doors. I'm seeing in the lives of you guys after this prayer, I'm seeing what what looked like a grayscale kind of all the way around. And when you open the door, everything. You know, this might look dark, this might look bright, this might look like, you know, a closet or a dead end. This one might look like a field of flowers. The Lord is going to, he, he's saying, he's illuminating doors, which doors to walk through and which doors to keep shut. And which doors that you need to come out and shut behind you. And you don't do it by sight. Don't do it by what you see when you open the door and you peel, peer through because you're projecting and, and, and that and the natural isn't always exactly what's going to happen when you walk through the door. Because a lot of it is witchcraft. A lot of it is a trick. A lot of it is a trap. And in, in the spirit, you might open the door and it looks like a dead end. But the Lord, if he illuminates that door and says walk through it, you can walk on through the wall. <clears throat> you don't even know what's on the other side. And so that God is... is I'm, I'm speaking, declaring that there's a, just a new level of discernment for everybody who's heard this tonight and prayed with me of this is the door. And if there is some, you know, like what happened to me where I, I did this and did this and it kind of opened me up to a little more confusion, that there will be something so clear. I, if you didn't watch the video, I believe it was last night or the night before about the signs, watch it. Because God will supernaturally guide us and direct us in the way that we should go. And if he needs to do something, like have somebody email me the exact video. Who Somebody who is false and fake and, and has a wicked demon spirit, but that sounds good. Email me that exact video. And then that false prophet, I know psh, that that was... That was static from the enemy and had nothing, should not have anything to do with my decision. So God is going to do that. He's going to do that. I mean, some it's just, you'll just see it's light and walk through and some God will show you. He'll direct you. He'll do what he needs to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to end here <clears throat> and I'm going to be on Friday morning at 7 a.m. doing prayer and then Sunday at 8 p.m preaching about prayer and um that series is good that kingdom living series is good and i think that it's gonna um continue to like bubble forth new things that god's gonna help us in to come up higher and things we already know and just really to ignite a passion to do some of the things we already know because it uh, it doesn't matter and, and this is why i wish i had matthew 7 but when he's talking about the people who says depart from me i never knew you it goes right into saying, he goes right into saying, um, you know, it doesn't matter how much you know about the truth if you're not walking in it. It doesn't matter. You can know all the truth. You know all about prayer, but if you're not praying, it's not going to do you any good. You know, you know the whole word, but if you're not walking by the word, living by the word, directing your life by the word, that word, you don't really know it personally, intimately. And... It, and I think what it goes on to say in Matthew 7 is it's basically building your house on the sand versus the rock. And when the storms come, it will collapse. 
And so God is saying there will be storms. And, 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 and I'm asking, and I have asked, for the collapse of some things in our lives and in the lives of leaders and churches and other people that need to be collapsed, that aren't built on the rock. Collapse them. Let's rebuild things. <laughs> Hope you guys share this. Hope you are blessed. Um, and I will see you either Friday morning or Sunday evening. I appreciate you guys. Love you.